Hey, thanks for tuning in. I'm going to do a production breakdown of my song Colors and talk about some of the choices I made in recording and mixing and how I ultimately shaped the sound of the track. So first, here's a little clip of the final mix. So first off, let's talk about drums. The drum sound is super important to me on a song I'm working on, you know, right next to the vocal in terms of shaping the overall vibe. So with this song, I had a really specific vision in mind. I worked with my friend Hector, who is an amazing drummer, and was really going for a very dry and tight, punchy sound, kind of reminiscent of a lot of 70s drum sounds. We recorded these drums in a small room, and we used a lot of dampening on the snare. Uh, the big fat snare drum, drum tortilla, is what we actually used. And ultimately, just the way that Hector played with kind of a lighter touch really helped this drum sound sound huge. It sounds counterintuitive, but with this kind of drum sound, if you have a lighter touch and you kind of lean into the compression and saturation a bit more, it can make the drum sound way bigger than if you're playing super hard. So here's just a little snippet of the raw drum recording without any EQ or other processing on it. And then here is the final mix of the drums. So in terms of the secret sauce for this sound, I would really say it's just combining compression and distortion. So if you look on you know, the kick drum track, for example, um, I like to use the DBX uh, 160 compressor because it adds a lot of extra snap to the attack of the kick drum. Uh, and then right after that, I always follow it up with some saturation or distortion, uh, usually using decapitator. And what this does is essentially it accentuates the transient and then it kind of rounds it off a little bit with the saturation. And so that ultimately gives you a really controlled yet punchy sound to the kick drum. Here's how that sounds. I'll start with it off and then turn it on. So pretty subtle, but definitely brings out a little bit more of that click. Uh, and then I always follow that up with a little bit of distortion. Again, I'll start with it bypassed and bring it in. So yeah, way more weight already on that. I do the same thing to my snare drum, usually using an 1176 and then also using decapitator. And I find the same thing. This really helps the snare drum to have consistency, punch, but also save a little bit of headroom by kind of rounding off that transient with the distortion. So here's how the raw snare sounds with just a little bit of a channel strip EQ and a noise gate on it. I'll just play the snare top first. And then bring in the snare bottom. Uh, but I want to add a little bit more attack to it, a little more thwack. So I usually use the 1176 uh, Rev-E, slowest attack, fastest release. Uh, and here's how that sounds. And then I'll do a faster attack compressor on the snare bottom. And then on the snare bus, which receives both of these tracks, that's where I'm adding my distortion. So um, you can hear how much weight and power this adds to the sound. I'll start with it bypassed. Um, and then beyond that, I think I just added some like 
a transient designer and, you know, some extra EQ just to uh, bring up some of those mid-range frequencies in the attack. A little more high end. Another really big element to this sound is the parallel buses. I usually do a parallel smash bus, which is compression, obviously. Uh, I'll either do all buttons in or eight and four pushed in. Here's how that sounds on its own. And then I also have a parallel bus just for distortion. And then I blend that underneath as well. Again, our friend Decapitator. So I have a setting I made just called Fat Drum Distortion. Uh, did Punish Mode and usually roll off some low end and high end. So it's mostly mid range focused. So here's how it sounds. So here's the before and after of just the drum mix and then with the parallel buses added. I'm gonna play back the whole drum mix uh, with these buses muted and then I'll bring them in. So automatically that adds a ton of power and energy to the drum sound. Um, but I still have a little bit more to do from there. So another thing that really shapes this sound is the compressor that I have on the drum and bass bus. So I use the Audioscape Decomp, which is a Zener diode style compressor limiter. And I set it to the slowest attack time, fastest release, and turn on the, the high pass filter uh, in the side chain as well, just to make sure it's not clamping down too hard on the low end. Uh, but it's still kind of gluing those elements together and making them feel just more cohesive. And it kind of has the effect of pushing down the bass a little bit whenever the kick drum hits, just by the nature of how that compression works together. And I just find that it really adds to the groove of the song. All right, lastly, I'll mention real quick uh, some percussion. So I have a kibasa I added in here. Uh, I felt like it really helped with that sort of driving hi-hat beat. So here's the drums. And then with the kibasa. And then in the chorus, I have some tambourine and shaker stuff happening. And yeah, those are the core essentials of the drum sound really and what make it sound super punchy and add all the energy and life. Obviously I have other processing in there, gates and EQs and uh, some, some limiters, things like that. But uh, all the heavy lifting is really done through the compression and the distortion that I'm using. Through time.